All right. Good morning and hello, everybody. It is I, Granorite, and here we are back with another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Crystal with our Gen 2 type challenge of Water Type, our new Water Type team. We are here, uh, ready to uh, get our team up to level 7 and then make our way up to uh, Violet. So, we're going to start out like we do, reading those Pokemon Biologies, and um, getting through uh, up to uh, Violet. So, we're going to start out by reading Magikarp's Biology, since we're going to be seeing a lot of Magikarp. Um, we're going to keep switching Magikarp in until he gets level 15 and learns Tackle, even if that means we switch him in early. Um, like, if he overlevels, is what I mean. So, any fight that he can be switched in, he'll be switched in. But Magikarp, who is slow leveling rate, wonderful, because Gyarados is really good. Magikarp is a piss sign Pokemon with a large, heavy, reddish-orange scales. It has large, vacant eyes and pink lips. Its pectoral and tail fins are white. Um... On its back is a stiff, three-peaked yellow fin resembling a crown. There is an identical fin on its underside. It also has long barbells. The barbells are white on a female and pale yellow on a male. A long-lived Magikarp is able to utilize its immense splashing power to leap high enough to scale mountains. It also has strong and a strong enough immune system to survive in the most polluted of waters. However, it is usually overlooked by trainers because of its perceived weakness. Even in the heat of battle, it will do nothing but flop around. It is believed that the ancestors of Magikarp were actually much stronger than modern Magikarp, and this led scientists to research its this species. Like Dr. Quackenpoker, if you remember from the anime. Um Magikarp is found in many bodies of water, such as lakes, rivers, and ponds. However, due to its weak swimming ability, it usually lives downstream of the water's flow. In Generation 1, Splash was its signature move. It is often seen uh, using Splash to leap out of water, which makes it an easy target for predators such as Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. Frillish is also a known uh, to prey on Magikarp. In Hoppy Town, there are th at least 31 unique pattern varieties of Magikarp, with their scales coming in colors such as gray, black, white, purple, pink, violet, apricot, and brown. These patterns can be classified by groups uh, depending on how Magikarp looks while it is still small. A specific pattern arises when it becomes much bigger. Which pattern can be caught depends on the type of old rod. The better the rod, the more groups of patterns can be fished. The people in Hoppy Town train their Magikarp to jump the highest in order to complete a series of leagues to win prizes. And the Gen 2 Pokedex information for uh, Magikarp, Gold says, an underpowered pathetic Pokemon, it may jump high on rare occasions, but never more than 7 feet. Silver says, for no reason, it jumps and splashes about, making it an easy making it easy for predators like Pidgeotto to catch it mid-jump. Crystal says this weak and pathetic Pokemon gets easily pushed along rivers where there are strong currents. And that is our information on Magikarp. We'll swap to Kabuto here since we're currently using Kabuto. Kabuto, medium fast leveling rate. Kabuto is a small arthropod Pokemon resembling a horseshoe crab. It is mostly flat with a protective brown shell covering its body. There are two small black eyes on top of its shell, which it uses for sight when it hides on the ocean floor. Underneath its shell is a black space that hides the, creature, the structure of, the, of its main body. Only its four short uh, yellow legs and a second pair of luminescent red eyes are visible on its underside. And that is a shiny Caterpie, everybody. Say hello to the shiny Caterpie. As our first wild shiny encounter of all of these playthroughs. <laughs> The Golden Caterpie. Uh, in its original time, Kabuto was prominently found on beaches, likely aided by its fast and powerful swimming ability. While it is commonly believed to be extinct, isolated populations of Kabuto have been unchanged for 300 million years. And our Gen 2 Pokedex information for Kabuto, Gold says on rare occasions some have been found as fossils, which they became while hiding on the ocean floor. Silver says this Pokemon lived in ancient times. On rare occasions it has been discovered as a living fossil. And Crystal says 300 million years ago, 
Uh, it hit on the sea floor. It, is, it also has eyes on its back that glow. And that is Kabuto. We'll also read here about Goldeen, since we use Goldeen, we've been swapping back and forth. Goldeen is a white Pissine Pokemon with orange markings. It has circular blue eyes with orange lids and prominent pink lips. On its forehead is a large horn, which is larger on a male than on a female. It has a small wavy dorsal uh, fin surrounded by an orange patch. The long pectoral fins with uh, and long pectoral fins with orange markings at the bases. Goldeen's billowing tail is orange around the base and turns white towards the edges. The tail is admired by many for its beauty and similarity to a ballroom dress. Goldeen has a wild temperament and will use its horn to smash its way to freedom of Captain Aquarium. It competes with others of its kind to determine which has the strongest, thickest horn. Humans uh, swimming near it must exercise caution lest Goldeen rams them. Goldeen is a very common sight in any body of fresh water, including ponds, lakes, and rivers. It can be sw seen swimming upstream in large schools during the breeding season in spring. Its strong fins allow it to maintain a steady speed of 5 knots while swimming upstream. It is known as the Water Dancer due to its elegant movements in the, gener in the water. In Generation 1, Waterfall was its signature move. And our Gen 2 Pokedex information for Goldeen. Uh, Gold says its dorsal, pectoral, and tail fins uh, wave elegantly in the water. That is why it's known as the Water Dancer. Silver says a strong swimmer. It is capable of swimming nonstop up uh, fast streams at a steady speed of 5 knots. And Crystal says uh, during spawning season, they swim gracefully in the water, searching for their perfect mate. Which leaves, last but not least, Squirtle, which is a medium slow leveling rate. Squirtle is a small reptilian Pokemon that resembles a light blue turtle. While it typically walks on two short legs, it has been shown to run on all fours in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. It has a large uh, purplish or reddish eyes and a slightly hooked upper lip. Each of its hands uh, and feet have uh, three pointed digits. The end of its long tail curls inward and its body is encased by a tough shell that forms and hardens after birth. This shell is brown on top, pale yellow on the bottom, and has thick white ridges between the two halves. A thick white ridge between the two halves. Squirtle shell is a useful tool. It can withdraw into the shell for protection or to sleep. The grooved round shape helps to reduce water resistance, um, allowing the Pokemon to swim at high speeds. Squirtle can spray foamy water from its mouth with great accuracy. Squirtle is scarce in the wild, although it can be found around small ponds and lakes. The anime has shown that it can be found living on secluded islands while other members of its with other members of its evolutionary line. Sharpedo is a natural predator for Squirtle, and in Generation 2, Skullbash was its signature move. And our Gen 2 Pokedex information for Squirtle. Gold says the shell is soft when it's born. It soon becomes so resilient, prodding uh, fingers will bounce off of it. Uh, Silver says the shell, which hardens soon after it's born, is resilient. If you poke it, it will bounce back out. And Crystal says when it feels threatened, it draws its legs inside its shell and sprays water from its mouth. And that is all of our <laughs> information on our uh, initial team so this is going to be a little slower of a start just because of Magikarp but it is what it is uh, the only fight starting out that we may not swap Magikarp in on will be the Bellsprout fights in the Bellsprout tower just because whatever switching in is going to take a decent amount of damage from that if we do that So we're going to speed through getting everybody else up.
And, you know, this is, like I said, it's going to take a little bit because of all the experience sharing that we're doing with Magikarp. But it is important um, because Magikarp is going to be useless until it gets to level 15 and learns Tackle. Uh, and really, still, it's going to be useless even after that until it evolves into a Gyarados at level 20. At least when it learns Tackle, it can do some fights on its own. There we got Magikarp for level 7, and it is a slow leveling rate too, which means it is going to take a good amount of experience to get it up to those levels. Did we get... we didn't get Goldie in the level 7. So this early game grass training that we're going to be doing is going to take a while, and I'm sorry about that, it's just what it is. We almost got Goldie in the level 7, so that's good. Be one down out of the three. Alright, this Caterpie should get Squirtle up to level 7. And it learned Bubble. Excellent. Now he's got to get Kabuto up. And just to make it a little faster for us, we'll swap Kabuto up here. So it's just one movement down the list. So our evolutions are going to go, first we'll have Squirtle and the War Turtle at 16, then we'll have Magikarp and the Gyarados at 20, and then we will have Goldeen into Seeking at 33, and then War Turtle and the Blastoids at 36, and then finally Kabuto and the Kabutops at 40. And I don't think we're going to have any issues with the first set of gym leaders. Like, I don't foresee anybody in the original eight gym leaders that's going to provide, a, you know, difficulty for us. Um, it's Lieutenant Surge and Erica in the second set that pose a danger. Which means our biggest threat through the early part of the game is going to be our rival with the Chikorita and, uh, what, Bayleaf Meganium. And his Magnemite as well. But we will overcome those challenges like we do everything else. Alright, that puts everybody to level 7. Excellent. We have a couple more berries we can pick up. I should have done that while we were training. But let's make our way up towards Violet. We already got the one from you. Yeah. Starting off here with Youngsta Joey, of course. We're going to swap to Squirtle in this first fight. Use some bubble. Actually have move diversity already with Squirtle. That's some good damage with bubble. Magikarp, and then we're going to swap to Kabuto. It's going to scratch through that Rattata. Oh, 
And we'll swap the Goldie in here. The Peck at the Caterpie. And we're just speeding through these fights just because if we're going to spend a lot of this episode grass training. And um, these first fights are not difficult. It's the same as the grass training. So as we do, we're going to um, get our team up to level 9 here. After we uh, get done with this trainer. We got poison, not nice. So the bell sprouts I'm worried about. So we're probably gonna do our first set of training here in the dark cave. The Geodudes will give us good experience and be easy for Squirtle to take out. And really it's just going to be Squirtle that can take him out right now. We'll use the other two on the Zubats. Kabuto and... Uh... Golding. But once uh, Squirtle gets to level 9, we'll go back out to the grass. Magikarp's at level 9. Oh, that's good. Exciting grass training right now. I mean, it's just riveting gameplay as we level up our Magikarp. Good, we didn't get poison, so that's nice. Sprouts. At least right now, no bell sprouts. We'll get the bell sprouts in the tower here shortly. Now our team, interestingly enough, is a very um, physical attack based team. Uh, special wise, I think that Blastoise has our highest special stat, but Gyarados, Kabutops, and Seeking are very physical based attackers. And I don't know if there's a way that we can actually get Thrash on our Gyarados, even though I would really like it. Um, I think you have to specifically catch a Gyarados to get Thrash on it. 
because I don't know if it learns it when it when it evolves. I think it learns bite, doesn't it? I have to. I'll have to look. All right, Magikarp's at level 10. So we're definitely making progress getting Magikarp up to 15. <coughs> I mean, the sooner we get it up to 15, the faster this will go. I mean, that's the easiest thing I could say. Sprouts. We need more level 5 hop ups. Those give good experience and are easy to take out. Speak and ye shall receive. Way through level 8 with both Goldeen and Kabuto, so that's good. About two thirds with Kabuto. You know, the biggest thing that's slowing us down is just the experience sharing with uh, Magikarp. Right now our Magikarp cannot do anything, and so the uh, switching is necessary. We're out of scratches. And do a quick heal. Alright, Goldeen's level 9, which means all we need to focus on is Kabuto. Alright, and Kabuto's level 9. Good deal. We are ready to go take on Faulkner's Gem. Magikarp's still at level 10. We're getting closer to level 11, so that's good. Got some good speed. Good attack and defense there. A good attack, defense, and speed here. And all around good stats there for Squirtle. Let me see if you're good enough to take on Falkman. Let's use Kabuto against this Spiro, and it's just going to be us scratching it while it pecks us. So we're going to speed through this. We're going to stop Squirtle in on these Pidgeys.
Take out that Pidgey. Excellent. And we are ready to go take on Faulkner once we heal here and hand out some berries. We're not going to get one to Magikarp because there's no reason for us to get one to Magikarp right now. Give it to our other three. That'll be doing most of the work. Alright, he sent out Pidgey. We're going to start off by switching to Kabuto. It is going to mud slap us down. We need one more scratch, Kabuto. There it is. And then we'll switch back to Magikarp here. And then we're going to swap to Squirtle. See if we can get some tail lips in here. So we could have some potions. I would really like Squirtle not to go down. Good deal. And Squirtle learned Withdraw. And we get Mud Slap. And we learn Mud Slap. Squirtle can. Alright, so we're going to teach it to Squirtle in place of Withdraw. Alright, we need a deposit. One of our Mews to get the egg. Alright, so right now we're gonna refrain from switching Magikarp in. We give some more berries out to Kabuto and Squirtle. We're going to see if we can finish getting Kabuto leveled up really quick against these low-level Bell Sprouts, because we might be able to just take him out with a single scratch. I'm hoping. Not the case, and that Vine Whip is just going to hurt. So, we're going to swap the Golden here. I can tell you Goldeen is going to get a lot of experience in here, because we're going to be using Goldeen against these uh, Bell Sprouts then. And we'll get Kabuto leveled up against one of the Hoot Hoots. Ah, Goldie learned Supersonic at level 10. Very nice. And again, I'm just going to speed through this fight because it's just us pecking. The fights that we really are interested in are here on the next floor. So Goldeen's going to get a lot of experience here. There's nothing I can do about it. It's going to happen. Alright, it used Growth. It didn't use Vine Whip, so that's good. But I'm not sending one of my other uh, water Pokemon out to be a sacrificial offering to the... Uh, Bell Sprouts. We're just gonna let Goldeen get up on that experience.
They really want to use growth on that first move, though. Alright, Hoot Hoot. We'll swap the Magikarp here. And we'll swap the Kabuto. We're just gonna scratch through this Hoot Hoot. It's not gonna take... That was too long. We're not gonna take a whole lot of damage because of uh, Rock type. All right, Sagely. Oh, and there's a bite. We'll see how much we actually take from this. See, 10 damage is pretty good, being that we're four levels higher at this point. Okay, that one used growth and just gives us that win. Just gonna speed through the hoot hoot fight here. Gets us level 10 on Kabuto and learns Absorb. Uh, we're out of regular bear. We're gonna give this bitter berry to Kabuto. Or poison berry, I mean. All right, let's swap magic heart back up. So, we'll be using Kabuto and um, Squirtle here for a bit. Since Goldine is so far leveled up over them. Good scratch. Leech lights us for one health on its own, and... Yeah. Come on, Kabuto! There we go. I want to keep that berry if I... Oh, well, it's, it's not a healing berry that's on um, Kabuto, is it? It's a poison berry. Let's just use Squirtle in this fight. Swap. Got another, another level on Magikarp, but well, this is just free experience. Alright, so we're going to take on this guy first just because we can heal up Magikarp, or Kabuto here. That level 15 
Magikarp is what you are aspiring to be, Magikarp. Getting four back on an absorb, that's pretty good. And we're safe. And we're asleep again. Kabuto is not wanting to wake up. There we go. Tackle's doing a bit more damage. But bubble hits for sure. Give this bitter berry to Squirtle. Alright, we got an Onyx here. Got level 13 on Magikarp. Right now, the thing that just gets us is all the switching in and out. Swap to Kabuto. We're just gonna scratch through these coughings while they tackle us. <laughs> I 
the hope is by the time that we get to where we're grass training here before Bugsy, Magikarp will be able to do stuff himself. That's the hope. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Anybody learn Swift? Golding can, that's good. That's worth. Might as well get that little bit of experience as you can. Oh, critical hit. Oi. Alright, we got it down. Magikarp still needs 666 hit points, or experience points to get to level 15 where it learns Tackle. Swift is a pretty decent attack early game. So I'm not at all upset that Golby Dean was able to learn that. Uh let's do Golden still here. Now, I have a poison cure, another poison cure berry, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get up to level 15 with Magikarp by the time we finish these trainers in here, but we're going to be close. Halfway, which isn't bad.
and that's why we gave it the poison cure berry. Squirtle's trying to learn Water Gun. Absolutely, that's better than Bubble. for the leveling up. Might as well do the easy ones first. Which are Kabuto and uh, Squirtle. Because we can take on the Geodudes and Onyxes down here. I don't want Zubats. That's all it's going to give me. Hey, Magikarp got Tackle! Woo! Alright, let's swap Squirtle up. Here for the rock Pokemon. But it seems that the Zubats disagree. Goodness. We had two Geodudes and one Onyx. We're going to get everybody up to level 16 like we do. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show animations. And I just realized that after we lost one. Well, here's War Turtle's full animation. Goldines. Kabutos. And Magikarps. We'll swap Kabuto up and we'll read about War Turtle while we level up Kabuto. So, Wartortle is a bipedal indigo reptilian Pokemon similar to a turtle. It has brown eyes, dark, a bar dark blue streak on each cheek, and two sharp teeth protruding from its upper jaw. It has three clawed fingers and pointed toes. On each side of its head are feather-like ears covered in pale blue fur. Uh, a brown shell with a pale yellow underside encases its body. 
A thick white rim separates the upper and lower halves of the shell. An older war turtle may have scars and algae growing on its shell. Poking out of the bottom of its shell is a thick, wavy tail that also has a light blue fur and cannot be fully withdrawn into its shell. Uh, this tail, its tail fur will darken with age. Its tail is a symbol is a popular symbol of longevity and good luck, making this Pokemon popular with the elderly. Because they are larger than Squirtle and have a larger shell, War Turtle have a more difficult time walking on land and keep their and keeping their balance in the water. To maintain balance while swimming at high speeds, War Turtle moves its furry ears uh, and tail as both rudders and balancing rods. Air can be stored in its fur uh, for extended underwater diving. It hides in water when hunting and emerges as a surprise prey. The anime has shown that War Turtle can be found living in colonies on islands, but prefers habitat. But its preferred habitat seems to be freshwater ponds and lakes. In Generation Two, Skullbash was its signature move. And our Gen Two Pokedex information for War Turtle. Gold says it is recognized as a symbol of longevity. If its shell has algae on it, that war turtle is very old. Silver says it cr cleverly controls its furry ears and tail to maintain its balance while swimming. And Crystal says its long furry tail is a symbol of longevity, making it quite popular among older people. And that is our information on war turtle. All right, let's keep leveling up. Again, it's the Geodude and the Onyx that are gonna give us the most experience down here, and that's what we're looking for. But I'm not going to pass up the Zubats if they keep attacking us since we have Scratch. We take him down to two hits. And even if we hit ourselves with Confusion, we get our health back on the Rock Pokemon when we use Absorb. Assuming we don't hit ourselves so much that we go down before then. Need to find myself a Rock Pokemon. I need to find myself a rock Pokemon. Thank you. This game sometimes. Alright, and there's Kabuto up to level 16. And now it's time to get the other two up, and we'll start with the harder of the two, Magikarp. At least it does enough damage to take out the Hop-Ups, and it doesn't get outscaled by the uh, Synthesis healing. Of course, it does have to hit the tackles, I guess. Don't want the Geodudes. Anything but the Geodudes. Magikarp does have pretty good defense, though, so it can take a lot of punishment. Which is good, because that's what's going to happen to it until it becomes a Gyarados.
four. Four Geodudes in a row. Running low on tackle, so let's go heal. Ah, there's our Togepi. Lose level of step. Nope, not quite. We need one more fight. That should do 16 for Magikarp. The king of the carp. Which means all we have left to level up is Golding. Swap up Swift since it's the better of our moves. Boids. That's a lot of Spiro. Not that I'm complaining. Hop-ups are a really good experience for us, so we like to see those. Close to 15 here. Holding is trying to learn horn attack. Yes, please. So Swift always hits, but horn attack does more damage. Alright, that should do it. Okay, let's give this a save. from this first fight. So I'm going to take a quick break and use the restroom. I'm going to start my timer again and I'll be right back. <laughs> 